Hello, this is Jim McKeith, developer evangelist for Rim Object Software. Today I'm going to show you how to do some ASP.NET development with Oxygen for .NET. There are really three different ways you can do ASP.NET development. I'm going to show you just one, but I'll tell you the other two are. You can do File, New Website. This will allow you to create a website that's a collection of pages that can use ASP.NET inline scripting. The difference with this is you can actually mix other languages. Different pages can be different languages. And then each page compiles into a single assembly. So you'll have multiple assemblies, one assembly for each page. The trick with this one is it's a little more difficult to share data between pages as far as linking the pages together. But the flip side of that is that it's easier to just deploy a new page and not have to recompile the whole application. Then we're going to look at actually creating a web application. There's two different types of web applications. There's the MVC web application and the regular web application. We're going to look at the regular web application, but the MVC application is Microsoft's new model view controller framework for building ASP.NET applications. This is what Stack Overflow uses, if you're familiar with that. It's uh, for people that are, want to create their application more with HTML5, jQuery, and other systems like that. Whereas the web application is a drag and drop resize com controls more akin to what you'd be used to using uh, WinForms or VCL development. And it uses a framework called the WebForms framework. So those are the three different ways you can build your ASP.NET application. We're going to take a look at web application right now. So let's call this Oxygen Web App. So you're immediately presented with this ASP.NET source code view. Now you're going to notice this is H, looks like HTML in here. Um, you have these other tags though here, for example, with this percent sign here that has the yellow highlighting. These are ASP.NET script tags. You can actually write oxygen code inside the page here. It's called inline scripting and that code will execute. That is the primary way in which you do ASP.NET scripting in websites. Okay. You can also do it here in a web app, but, uh, we're not going to look at that right now. There's an article in the wiki on inline scripting, though, that'll show you how to do that. Down here at the bottom, we have different view options. So I can switch to design view. And so this gives me a design surface where we can add components here from the uh, web application components. We can also do a split view where we can see both views at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead and let's change my page title. Now I can change it here in the source code view, and then I can also change it over in the properties editor if I select the right place, but I'm just going to change it in the source view. I, I like doing hands-on with the source code. That's just the way I am. Hello world. Okay. So you'll notice that when I do that now here, it says design view is out of sync with source view. Anytime you edit in the source view and you're in the split view, right? Like this, then the design view will become out of sync. And it just does that so it's not trying to update constantly, and then you get, you know, half-formed tags and crazy things happen. So as soon as you edit that, it just says, okay, it's out of sync. When you're done, you just click anywhere in here, and it re-updates it. Now, I didn't do anything that's visible because I just changed the title of the page, so we don't see anything change here. I'm going to go ahead and drop some components down here and show you how this works. So let's start with a text box. So I can drop the component in here in the code view like that. And now I'll click here and it updates. There's that. Or I can drop the component this way. Where's my button at? Button. Drop it right here like this. And it updates immediately up here. So now there's the button I just added. And here's the text box. And then I want to put a list box in here. So you'll notice my list box is to the side here of this one. Now I can drag this down here and put it below it. So the, it does this flow fo layout, which is how HTML pages typically are laid out automatically. You can, um, this is straight HTML up here. So you could add cascading style sheets or a table or whatever you want to do to lay these out differently. You have that flexibility. I'm just going to leave it like this for now. And let's make this a little bigger. Okay. So I have a text box, a button and a list box. The list box is telling it's not bound to any data source at this point, which is I'm going to take this button here and come over here to the property editor and I can change the text to say add. Okay. And now I'll resize this so that it fits that. 
You'll also notice that I could have edited this, edited the text here or edited the width there. So you have different ways of editing everything depending on what you're most comfortable with. Now you're going to notice that these controls added here start with this ASP prefix. What that means is this is not the tag that's going to be displayed in the browser. This tag runs at the server and tells the server to generate the HTML necessary to create this list box in the page. Okay. So this div just as a regular div that's going to appear in the web, the, the web browser, whereas anything that says run at server is going to get processed by the ASP.NET server to generate the HTML that will be sent to the client. So I'm going to put some code on this button click event. Now there's two ways I can do that. I can just double click on the button or I can single click the button and go over here to the events tab and double click in here. So this is the code behind file. Okay. This is just a regular oxygen source file here that I can then add code that will handle this button click event. So we're just going to say list box. So you see I have code completion here. Box one dot items dot add text box one dot text. Okay. And then we're just going to clear text box one texts. Pretty straightforward, nothing too crazy here. So I'm going to show you over here in this Solution Explorer, we see this is the ASP.x file, which is the uh, ASP.net file. And then we have, this is the code behind file, which we were just in. And then we have this other file here. Now this other file is automatically generated by Visual Studio based on what you do here. So if we look in this code behind file, you're going to notice I have no declaration of list box one or text box one. Okay. Those are not declared in the class, but you see this is a partial class. So this partial class is a single class that's defined in two files. The other file is this designer file here. So you see here, here's the default and here's my text box, my button and my list box are all declared in there. So these are declared automatically behind the scenes. You never need to be in here. Um, it's just one of those things that sometimes you're wondering like, Hey, where's my declaration for that? That's where it's at. It's in the other file. If you do make changes to that, it will get automatically regenerated when you make a change here. So don't mess with that. It's just so you know what it's, what it's there and where it's at. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this. Um, I'll go ahead and start without debugging. Now you're going to notice it started, it says ASP.NET development server on this crazy port number. It's going to randomly pick a port number that's not in use on my machine to put the server on. And that comes up. See, there's my new title I put on here and I can add text in here. Which is rocks. It remembers it from when I test trialed this earlier and hit the add button. Now you're going to notice here, watch the, the, uh, it's going to actually do a post back really quick. So see, it did a post back, added it down to the bottom. There we go. So we've created our first simple ASP.NET application here using code behind. This is great. We've had a single page here, but sometimes you want to have more than one page. So you can do that simply by going here, add new item. And we're going to add a new web form because remember these are web form pages and we'll just call it uh, page two, page two. So now you see we have another page two that has another uh, ASP ASPX file, which is your ASP.NET source file, which we see here, and the designer file and the code behind file. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my first page here, and I want to put a link between the two. And I do that by dragging page two onto the design surface here. This is one of the ways you can do it, I guess. It's not the only way. So you see it's created an anchor tag, href to page two ASPX. Put a Paragraph tag in here just for a good measure. And now we've created a, a link between the two. Now notice that this is linking to a separate ASPX file. This file is actually, both files are part of the same assembly behind the scenes. So it all gets compiled down to a single DLL. There is not multiple pages, multiple ASPX files deployed to the server, just the single DLL, single assembly. Um, we can change the text on here. To click E. If you type right, 
There we go. Click me. Okay. And I want to link back to this other one. So I'll just come in here and type a href. And we'll go back to the default, which is our main page. Now, default is your page by default, but you can change that if you want to. You just right click and say, set a start page, or you can say, set a start page to change it back. So when we'll run this, and it runs in our default browser, whatever we have selected, this happens to be Google Chrome. And here it is with the new click me which takes you to this page here, back and forth. So again, you'll see that the two different ASPX is there, but behind the scenes, like I said, it's a single assembly. Go ahead and show you debugging works here. So I'll just go in here and add a breakpoint right there. And we'll run this. Debugging on this time. And I'll type uh, breakpoint, the add button, and we get the breakpoint here with inspection just like we would expect. So there you go, there's a short primer introduction video for ASP.NET web forms. This is creating a web app which is ideal for when you have multiple pages that come together to make a single application so where the pages are going to have a high level of cohesion together. You can find out more about this with the ASP.NET web application primer available in the Oxygen Wiki at wiki.net oxygenlanguage.com. Until next time.